Do you want to learn how to make your own NFTs? Today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial that shows you exactly how to make your own NFTs and do it for far cheaper than if you were minting on Ethereum. Are you ready? Well, hey there, crypto friends. Thanks again for joining me. So today's all about making your own NFTs. I've been getting so many requests on how to mint your own NFTs. I decided to just do a quick tutorial, but a step-by-step -step tutorial that's great for beginners that are just getting their feet wet in creating NFTs. So all of you guys knew exactly how to do this process. So today we're going to be doing this on the Wax blockchain. This is by far one of my favorite blockchains to mint my own NFTs on. It's incredibly fast. It's incredibly cheap and you're not paying transaction fees like you are on Ethereum. So before we get started though, if you're not already a part of my community of stashers, you don't need a mustache to join, but you do need to love learning about NFTs and crypto with the community. And you can sign up in my Telegram link below right there. All right, so let's go take a look at this and we'll get started on this. I'm gonna give you everything step by step. So if you knew nothing about uh, creating your own NFTs, I'm gonna show you start to finish. So you'll be able to confidently do so on Wax by the time you're done watching this video. Okay, so the first step, obviously, is if you're not already familiar with Wax, you have to have a Wax wallet. Just like any other blockchain, you have to have your own blockchain wallet to be able to manage your funds and manage your NFTs, right? So the one that I recommend is using the Wax Cloud Wallet. Now, this is a custodial wallet, which means your keys, your private keys, are held by Wax themselves, the company. They're a third party. Now, typically, I always advise everyone to hold their own private keys. But in this case, you know, for this type of wallet, it makes it incredibly simple for everybody to sign up. All you need is a social login. So you can use Facebook, Google, uh, there's a bunch of different ones, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Steam, if you want as well. So there's many options, uh, and, or you could just use a plain old email. So really quickly, it, you can sign up for a wallet and get started right away with this stuff. And if you're really looking to hold your own private keys, you can always message me later and I can give you a little bit of a hint on how to get that up and running. So obviously first thing, sign up for a Wax Cloud Wallet. And then once you got your wallet all signed up and you're logged in, you'll see it looks something like this. So this is my wallet here and you guys can see I'm all logged in. Now there's a couple things I wanna point out here that uh, are important for this tutorial in particular. Now uh, on Wax, you do need to have a small, a small amount of resources to do just about anything. And so that's one of the first hurdles that we're gonna to have to get over. And obviously you're going to have to purchase Wax somewhere. Now, if you're just trying to get started to mint a few NFTs, uh, jump into my Telegram link below, uh, I have the group right there, jump in my group and let me know. And I can actually send you a couple of Wax to get started. But you will need to buy some resources. And so when you look at some of the resources, the most important one that you really wanna be looking at is the RAM. The other two are not as big of a concern, but RAM is what you need to do actions on this blockchain. So if you want to mint an NFT or sell NFTs or buy, you know, transact, you need a little bit of RAM in your account. You don't need a lot. You, you just get two or three wax, maybe five wax, not, not too much, but you can see I have about 11% capacity here. I actually have a, a decent amount in RAM. So that's the first hurdle we need to get over here, but it's not that big of a hurdle. You can actually get wax at quite a few popular exchanges. Uh, the ones that I recommend are if you're here in the United States, you want to use Bittrex. That's one of the popular exchanges here in the United States. Or if you prefer, you can also uh, use the international exchange on KuCoin. They also offer Wax there. Both are really quality exchanges. I've been using both exchanges for many years now. Uh, so if you are a US-based customer, you know that you can be using Bittrex and it is a, a, a you know a sanctioned, fully compliant KYC exchange. And KuCoin is the exact opposite. So it is not a KYC exchange uh, and it is not compliant, but uh, it just depends on where you're at. Uh, you guys, I'll, I'll put some links down below for both for you guys, and you can uh, click the links there to get started on either one of those exchanges. So once you've already got uh, your Wax Cloud wallet, you've signed up, maybe you got a little bit of Wax now in resources, right? Uh, now you can get started on actually minting your own NFTs. And the, the location we do that is here on Atomic Hub. So you can see here in the browser bar, it's wax.atomichub.io. I'll also make sure that link is in the description. And you can see this is, a, they call this Atomic Assets. So this is the Atomic Hub for Wax. This is where all of the trading is going on, mostly for the Wax platform. There are other marketplaces, but this is definitely the most popular and the largest by far. 
So you can see a little bit here of, of what's going on as, as on the marketplace and sales. We're not gonna focus too much on all the other aspects here, but we are gonna focus on the NFT creator. So once we've logged into, uh, our, we, we've our created our Wax Cloud wallet, now we need to log into the wallet. So you just have to hit the login button here and you'll see it'll ask you which option you wanna log in with. We wanna log in with the Wax Cloud wallet. So it's gonna pop up a it's gonna pop up a, a transaction request. Uh, you're not gonna see that on your screen here, but anytime you're transacting on Wax using your wallet, it's gonna pop up a little notification saying, "Hey, uh, is it okay if we do this?" So you do need to make sure that you don't have like pop-ups blocked in, or any kind of way. Uh, also, too, if you're on Brave, you might want to put Brave Shields down just for for this site in particular. So now that we're all logged in and we're all set up, we have our account, you can go and customize your account uh, by going to some of the inventory uh, listings there and customizing, but we wanna focus on the NFT creator. So this is the NFT creator and this is where everything starts. You can see this is my collections, NFTs live within collections. They're like groups for NFTs that are of a similar theme. And so in particular, the way that I go about it is I always have one top level collection which is the crypto stash collection. Everything I'm going to do is going to be in that collection. And then I use what we call schemas to be able to break those down into different groups. And we're going to cover that here in a second. But I wanted to show you uh, the fact that here is my RAM and I have 100 KB of RAM. And you can always buy more directly uh, here from the site as well. Uh, but you do need to have a little bit of RAM, like I mentioned earlier, in your wallet to be able to actually create the NFTs themselves. So first things first, create a collection. So we'll go here and you can see creating a collection is actually pretty easy. All you need is a photo and then you need a collection name and a display name. And you can add some other optional details like maybe if you have a website or you can put a description for your collection, which I encourage. And the last part of this is actually the market fee. Now this is actually pretty important. So whatever fee you put in here, you can see you can put zero to 15%. That is the, the fee that you'll be getting as a creator anytime someone is buying and selling your nfts so if you created an nft for ten dollars and you put a market uh, a fee of ten percent in there every time i you know someone bought that for ten dollars that nft for ten dollars or resold it for ten dollars you'd be getting a ten percent cut of that sale and that's in perpetuity uh, perpetuity 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 <laughs> that, that's for as long as that nft is traded uh, on this uh, on any of the wax platforms so you're going to get that percentage as residuals as an artist this is one of the biggest factors here right so you set this at the at the the collection level and so a couple other things to to note here is that your collection name actually has to be exactly 12 characters now this is a little bit of a weird thing with the wax blockchain in particular but it has to be exactly 12. So you gotta get a little creative there. You can use the numbers one through five uh, and only lowercase uh, letters as well, A through Z. So you do have to get a little creative there, uh, but you can make the display name pretty much whatever you want. So you can have the collection name be something and the display name be uh, you know exactly what it should be. So that collection name is actually really important because that is what's showing up in search results. So you must keep that in consideration. Okay. So if we've got our photo loaded up, we've got our name loaded up for a collection, our display name is set, we put in details for our website and our description, and we've set our market fee, you just go ahead and create that collection and you'll end up with it looking just like this. So now you have your collection with the name and we'll go ahead and just go ahead and view that collection. So here is my collection, the Crypto Stash collection. You can see I actually had to use crypto and then five for an S because someone actually took my name, my collection name, before I got to it. Someone's camping on my crypto stash name. Uh, if you're out there and you're watching, please, please sell it back to me. <laughs> so here we are uh, in our collection and you can see I put my website address, I have my display name, crypto stash, uh, the best mustache in crypto, you know it. And my market fee, I've set at 10%, so I will get 10% of all future sales of my NFTs, regardless if I'm selling them or someone else's. Now that we have our collection set, we are going to now break this down into specific groups, which we call schemas. And schemas are a way to group similar NFTs into, into their own little, uh, you know, schema. <laughs> so you can see here uh, your schema, uh, you have a name and you have attributes. Now, unlike the collection, you don't have to uh, do exactly 12 characters for the schema name. It can be anything as long as they're lowercase and one through five. So uh, we'll do, you know, test schema. 
And then on the right hand side, you have your attributes. Now these attributes can be anything that you want them to be. There are gonna be, there are default ones every time you create any kind of NFT, you need a name, right? So the name and the image are the two things that you cannot create an NFT without, right? But you can add extra attributes to, to as much as you want. Perhaps you've collaborated uh, with another artist on this piece. You could add a new attribute and uh, make it a uh, collaboration. Uh, and then you could put in a attribute type of text, right? So that way when I create the NFT, I have a little area in, in, in this schema to be able to put the collabor the art the name of the collaboration artist, right? You could do this for lots of different things. You could create different rarity levels. You could put all kinds of additional information into your NFT by creating as many new attributes as you'd like. And they give you options of like text, or you can do uh, numbers, you can do extra images, which is great. So sometimes maybe you wanna do the back of a card, which is also very popular. You could do that as well. Uh, and there's some other extra ones like IPFS, hash, and Boolean. We're not gonna go over these in particular. We wanna keep it very straightforward for you guys today, but just know that you can add extra elements here. And most popular one is gonna be text and image. So once we have that all done, we have our name here, we have our attributes set. These attributes are gonna be for everything you create in this schema. So you wanna make sure any NFT you create within the schema will have these attributes. So I'm gonna show you exactly the, one, the ones that I've created. I have one for a called Sticky Stash. This is for all of my stickers. I did a big sticker collection. And I have one called Basic Stash. And this is just for very basic at, uh, assets that I'm creating. And so today, while well, we meant this, we're gonna go use the Basic Stash. So you can see uh, right here, I went with the default one, name, uh, text, image, image. And then I actually did add an additional one called Description. So I can, I can add a little description about that NFT uh, into, you know, embedded within the, the metadata of the NFT itself. So the schema is like a way to group similar NFTs into, into you know, a group that, that makes sense, right? Something that are apples to apples. Now we, you say, okay, now that's great. Now can we just get to minting? Right now, this is where you'd be tempted to just go and hit this mint new asset button. And you can totally use it that way and you can just go mint the asset directly. But what I actually recommend is scrolling down to the bottom and creating a template for that asset. Because depending on how many copies you wanna make and when you're gonna mint them and how many you mint at a time, it's far easier to create a template to then mint over and over again than having to put the information in every single time. So here we are with the create new template. We're gonna show you an example here of how you can create a new template to make it super simple to continue to mint these NFTs over and over again and not have to put the same information in, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to upload our image. Now uh, I'm going to pick this from my from my computer here, and you can see we're going with the stash signal. This is this is the this is the the signal you put in the sky anytime you need help in crypto, and stash comes flying into the rescue. So the other thing to take in consideration is the max supply. This is how many NFTs could ever be created using this template, using this image, using this data. So uh, in particular, I wanna make this one very high supply, max supply, because I wanna give these away for free for a very long time. But if you wanted to make something really rare, maybe you say the max supply that could ever be created of this is 10. And that way you could never ever mint one besides, I mean, you could do another template in with the same you know image, but it wouldn't have the same metadata connected to it. And you would know that it was a separate mint and not this same one. So there's also options to uh, turn on and off, transferring and burning. Uh, you probably always want to leave these on. Assets can be transferred as important. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to sell things or send them to people once they're in their wallet. They're locked there and they can never leave. And then burning just means that someone can destroy that NFT themselves if they like. Uh, that may seem like a bad thing, but in general, it reduces the supply. So that means that uh, they're, they, it theoretically would go up in value because there's less of them out there. So I usually leave both of these on. Now we want to put in the name of the NFT. This is what it's actually going to be called. And then we're going to call this the stash signal. the stash signal. And then we're gonna go with text like, uh, let me see here. Um, you, are you in need? Nope, whenever, whenever you are in need of crypto help, <laughs> C-R-Y. Just use the stash signal. Yeah. 
and the crypto stash himself will come to the rescue. I'm just making this stuff on the spot. This is just a fun one we're doing for this demonstration, which I'm gonna give away for free, but you put that stash signal out there and you need crypto help, stash will come and help you. So, okay, so you see we have everything here. We've loaded our image, we've set the max supply, we've checked our, 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 our options here. We've made sure there's a name. And now the other thing I'm gonna make sure that you guys understand is that if you upload an image in this box and then nothing shows here like that looks like this, then do not go and create template because you will not have an image attached to it and you won't be able to upload an image later. So just make sure that you see something in this box before you go ahead and create template because I've made that mistake as a beginner on Wax before and I still make it sometimes. <laughs> I don't notice and I'm like going through it very quickly and I don't notice that the image did not get saved here and this is exactly what it looks like. It's a hashed, uh, you know, uh, characters for that image, right? So right, we're going to create that template. Here we go. Transaction is going through. This is going to hit your wallet. It's going to add, it's going to have you pop up. You're going to confirm it. Uh, I have mine already set to auto confirm, but you will have to confirm transactions like this anytime you're creating something. So uh, template created. So we're we're great to we're good to go. So we've created that template, and you can see it right here. So you can see there is the template ID with the stash signal. And now 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 it is time to mint this asset. I know it seems like a little bit of a long process. But once you do it once or twice, and obviously once you have your collection set up in your wallet, it actually goes really fast. So here we go. Well, this is this is when we're actually going to make this magic happen. And so you can see right now, no template is selected, but I'm going to select my template, the stash signal. And you can see the image loads. The name is here. There is the description. I don't have to keep putting this in every time I want to mint assets because the difference here on wax is you mint assets at 10 at a time. And there's other ways to mint them more and more at a time, but in general, they do have a limit of how many you can mint all at once, and the number is 10 at the moment. Now, there are other ways, more advanced ways, to mint a bunch on demand or to sell a bunch in what we call a drop, and they mint on demand. Uh, so if you have a supply of 300 and, and people are buying them, they just mint as people buy. So we'll, we'll go over that in another more advanced tutorial here in the future. But some important pieces here in this asset creation is the asset owner. You want it to be you. You want this to go to your wallet. So make sure you're grabbing whatever your wallet name is up here in the top right corner. You can see mine is z4fos.wam. So that's what I put here. And how many copies do I want to create? Well, since we've never created this NFT before, you have to also take and consider mint numbers. So it's the first time I'm creating this NFT. So if I put 10, I'm going to mint one number, mint number one, mint number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we'll continue to go down the line as you mint more copies until we get to 1500 because that is the max supply we put on this. But what's great is this allows you to control the supply, the available supply that's going out into the world or into the marketplace. And that gives you good fine control instead of just minting all of them and they're all there, you know, and just sitting there. So for this one, we're just going to mint 10 today. And you guys can see create asset it's that easy it gives you a summary of exactly what it's going to look like this is what you'll see in this marketplace when you're selling it it'll look just like this we see that we've made it in the basic stash uh, and then we're using this uh, this template and this is the result so we're going to confirm the transaction this is where once again you're going to confirm it in your wallet with a pop-up you'll get this transaction successful and we have created our very first nft here on wax congratulations <laughs> I know there's quite a few steps, but like I said, once you have it all set up, it actually works pretty easy. So now you can see we've minted our asset and here we are. Here's all the assets we just minted. And you can see you can hover over them and you can see a little bit. Uh, it does take a second for the mint number to calculate. So if you see it saying calculating, calculating, don't, don't start to panic. Uh, it will show up in just a minute or so. It's pushing all this information to the blockchain, which actually hap usually happens you know, very fast. Uh, so the calculation of mint numbers will take a second. So you can see we've made these, I can click on it. Uh, you can see now here I've officially created it. It has all the information we put in here, uh, the name, the collection, what schema it is, the template ID, if it's transferable and burnable, and the owner who owns it, right? I own it right now. And now you can go list it on the marketplace, right? So really cool uh, in, in, you know, uh, way to do this. And on Wax, all this is free. It costs nothing to mint. It costs nothing to send or receive on Wax. So anytime you're transacting, if, if you're buying somebody's piece on Wax, there is no fee except for the market fee. Now the market fee obviously is a fee you're gonna have to pay, uh, and that is set by the creator like we did earlier in the video, I set it at 10%. So you, you, you can at least be comfortable 
in the fact that you're supporting the artists and not just, uh, you know, Ethereum mining fees, which are ridiculous. So hopefully you guys really love this tutorial uh, on how to mint your own NFTs uh, if you're a beginner or maybe you're just getting you're not a beginner and you're just getting started with wax blockchain this is a step-by-step -step tutorial and i you know if you have any questions i'm always available you can jump in my telegram group we talk about nfts creating nfts and all those fun things all day long and i would advise you if you have any questions just jump in there and let me know and we can uh you know or put up the, the put up the stash signal and i'll come a running <laughs> well that's all we have for today folks until next time Stash that crypto, friends.